Despite the fact that tobacco products are not healthy, the tobacco industry still uses the same narratives to convince people. The nicotine and harmala alkaloids found in tobacco are highly addictive stimulants. Besides heart and liver diseases, tobacco use also causes lung cancer. Though we don't support tobacco use, we and I am sure you also are curious about the process of tobacco farming. So in today's video, we are going to take you on a tour of a tobacco farm from start to finish and see how tobacco is grown, harvested and processed into the finished product. So watch till the end if you want to learn about the tobacco farming process. Now let's take a look at how tobacco farming is done. While tobacco is tropical in origin, it is grown throughout the world. The soil for tobacco farming should be fertile, healthy, and well-drained. Plus, it must be exposed to the sun as much as possible. For successful tobacco cultivation, it is also essential to have a supply of healthy, well-developed seedlings at the right time for transplanting. In 8 to 10 weeks, the seedlings will be ready for planting in the field after they have grown to 10 to 18 centimeters in length. Workers use transplanting machines to plant these saplings. When planting them, farmers leave enough space between them. This is because tobacco saplings can reach three to four feet in height very quickly. Tobacco farmers usually space their plants 80 centimeters apart between rows and between plants within a row depending on the type of tobacco. The cultivation of tobacco crops is always claimed to offer high rates of return for investors and long-term benefits to smallholder farmers. But labor costs for this type of production are extremely high, as much as twice as high as for crops of a similar type. The maturation period of cultivated tobacco in the field is 100 to 130 days from the date of transplanting. Tobacco Harvesting once the tobacco plants mature, it's time for the harvesting. There are several ways in which tobacco can be harvested. The oldest method is to cut off the stalk with a sickle at the ground and harvest the entire plant at once. As the plants grow, they usually require topping and suckering. Topping refers to the removal of the tobacco flowers, while suckering refers to the pruning out of unproductive leaves. In large-scale farming, tobacco harvesters are used to harvest tobacco. These machines harvest the whole plant and all its leaves. Tobacco harvesting with these machines is highly cost-effective. However, topping the flower and plucking immature leaves are still done by hand. Do you know? A tobacco worker who plants, cultivates, and harvests tobacco may absorb the nicotine equivalent to 50 cigarettes per day. Tobacco cultivation results in nicotine poisoning, also known as green tobacco sickness. Even with protective equipment, it is difficult to avoid nicotine poisoning when working with tobacco plants. Coming back to the video. After the tobacco leaves have been harvested, they are transported to nearby factories. The leaves undergo a further process here called curing. Tobacco leaves are cured with the intention of reducing their chlorophyll content and changing their color. Tobacco curing is also known as color curing. Curing tobacco leaves is necessary in order to prepare them for consumption since the green tobacco leaf cannot be ignited and smoked in its raw, freshly picked state. During the process of curing and aging, tobacco leaves slowly oxidize and degrade their carotenoids. After curing, it's time for grading these batches of leaves. The leaf may be piled in bulk to condition for a time before it is prepared for sale. In most cases, the preparation of the leaf consists of grading it and putting it in a package or bale of a convenient size and wait for the buyer to inspect and remove. The fineness of grading depends on the type of leaf and local custom. As soon as the grading is done, these bundles of tobacco are inspected and are ready to be shipped to factories making tobacco products. North Carolina was the largest tobacco producer in the United States in 2014, employing 30,000 workers and producing 400 million pounds of tobacco per year. Around the world, tobacco is produced in 6.7 million tons each year. In terms of tobacco production, China, India, Brazil, and the United States are the top four producers of tobacco. 
a large number of pesticides are used in tobacco farming. Tobacco farmers are often adversely affected by pesticides because they are unaware of the health effects and the safety protocols. Soil, waterways, and food chains are contaminated with these pesticides and fertilizers. The dangers of pesticides are compounded by the presence of child labor. In addition to affecting a child's nervous system and immune system, early exposure to pesticides increases his or her lifelong cancer risk. This concludes our episode for today. I hope this video sheds some light on tobacco farming. How do you feel about this? Is tobacco farming beneficial to us? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this episode, then press the like button and share it with your friends. Until next time, stay safe and thanks for watching.